Hello, this is Vitual Suchesnu, learning and having fun with chess. In our last video, we had a look at a game from another chess bootcamp member who wanted some feedback on their opening. And we had a number of recommendations, particularly about opening principles. Today's game is a rematch where that member tried to implement some of those opening principles in the game, and let's see what difference it made. Let's go take a look. So this game I played again against Sassy Skittles, and after the last match we had a bit of a chat about uh, some feedback, uh, particularly around opening principles, and they tried to implement some of that in this game. I had the white pieces, and as usual I start off with the Vienna. So, so e4, they play e5, so try to take the center rather than trying to push a sort of passive move. I develop a knight, they develop a knight as well. And this is in fact the max lang defense. Now against the max lang, I usually try to develop the bishop hoping for a copycat uh, variation, but they took on the idea of trying to develop knights before bishops if possible, so they developed the other knight. And this is super solid. Here I decide to uh, make that diagonal, the plan of f4. They chose now to develop the bishop, super solid. I now push f4, high, you know, very, very provocative. They ignore the provocation and castled. This is super solid, uh, and this is basically equal at this point. Zero, zero, zero. And this is one of the things that tends to happen when you just play using opening principles. Even if you don't particularly know any theory in this line, so in this case of being a game, this is a very, very solid position for black. Now, I obviously do know the Vienna, so here, because my opponent is a 600 rated player, I decide to play provocatively with immediate knight to d5. Now, this is a mistake. Developing the other knight first is better. But my thought here is I'm really trying to get them to trade. I want to get rid of that knight uh, now that they've castled kingside because uh, that knight is, of course, defending potentially the king, particularly defending the h7 square, uh, and potentially then also closing off this diagonal because then uh, this chain of pawns blocks off all of black's pieces onto the queen side. So it allows me to potentially get you know, a bit of a good attack on the king side without their defenses getting in. So that's my idea. Now black can punish uh, this move in this uh, at this point by playing knight to a Five. So that isn't necessarily the easiest move to play. Now, if they find that, this is about minus two, so quite good for black. Now, I expected that they wouldn't find it, and they didn't, so this drops it back to roughly about minus one. That's okay. I now, as I said, close off the center with my with my chain of pawns, and you will notice this chain of pawns almost like the, divides the board in two, where most of black's pieces are on the wrong side of the fence. They now couldn't resist, and so they capture, and this is this is a mistake. So we're basically back to equality, and I take, and this is actually quite a good position for me. They jump their knight forward, that, that's okay. I attack the knight, what are they going to do? They attack my bishop, that's fine. Take, and they give a check first, which is a good move, but I can block that. Takes, takes, queen is now developed, and they take. And at this point, have a look at this bar, we're basically about equal. So white is very, very slightly ahead. However, when you look at this transformation, this diagonal structure, again, points towards the king. Basically, black's pieces are now on this side. I can potentially get my pieces onto this side. Uh, I'm going to try to probably get my king to castle queen side, and then push these pawns. So that's my plan here. It's a little bit risky uh, because I think black is potentially actually slightly ahead here. So as you can see, uh, goes there sort of up just a little bit of tempo. Now Stockfish disagrees with this whole pawn storm idea. So we've got a pawn storm race, but you will notice that black is doing really well. So black is rated at 600. It's not familiar with the Vienna game. Uh, now I've got a tactical strategic idea here, but they're doing super well. And this is one of the things that that happens when you just play according to opening principles, rather than trying to, you know, uh, wing your way through. Uh, they push again, push. Uh, and this is 
their first real mistake because allowing the H pawn to get to the sixth rank is actually a real threat for black because firstly, the queen and the rook line up on this H file while black's pieces here don't provide the same threat onto my side. So push again, they're now in trouble, they give a check, but I can slide the king out of the way. There isn't a direct threat yet. They push and now that really is a blunder because that is really not much of a threat because with my king on a2, again, there isn't a direct attack that black immediately has. So now I take and black's in a lot of trouble. And here it's actually uh, about, uh, oh, where are we? I think it's yeah, roughly plus nine or so, maybe even worse than that. Black is in some real, real trouble because queen and rook now are on the potential open h file. And of course this pawn is uh, attacking that rook as well, which of course comes with a check. So they give a check, that's fine. Uh, and now they're in some trouble. They decide to move the rook out of the way. Unfortunately, those earlier mistakes led to a structural issue because queen now to h6 is unavoidable checkmate. So I think uh, my opponents, Sassy Skittles, saw the writing on the wall, so they tried to delay checkmate as much as possible. Yep, block, rook captures. Give a check, pawn captures, they capture back, no immediate threat now, and unfortunately, queen captures h7 is mate. However, what a brilliant game by my opponent, especially 600, uh, no, 600 rated, fantastic. Good game, GG. The big takeaway from this game is to make use of the opening principles and incorporate them into your opening play. It really makes a big difference, especially if you are not specifically familiar with lines of opening theory. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.